Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got in front of me today are some Soviet infantry from World War II. These miniatures are from the Plastic Soldiers Company and they are 28mm ones that have been, I'm pretty certain these were designed for 15mm figures and have been scaled up to be cast in plastic because the detail on them is a little... Mm, we won't go into that too far, but they work. And importantly, they're also pretty cheap. And most importantly, the details is there to see how each bit would be painted anyhow. So I've gone ahead and yeah, three different versions here of how you can get Soviet uniforms on the table using one coat paints. I'm going to go through a couple of different manufacturers for this one, and I will mention a couple of alternatives along the way. But in the description, I'm also going to drop a link to Tale of Painters, and I recommend check out their uh, contrast and express comparison guides because everything that I'm going to show you, if you can't get your hands on one color or the other, you can eyeball it. That's the beauty of Soviet equipment. Close enough is close enough. So all of the paints that I have used for these ones though will be listed in the description. Let's get started. So first things first is to hit these guys with a primer. Now you can experiment a little bit with which one you like. I'm using here Wraithbone from Citadel. But something like Bone White from Vallejo or Brain Matter Beige from the Army Painter would both probably work quite well too. What you want is one that's going to go out with a nice smooth surface. Now almost universally, when you're painting things using speed paints or contrast or what have you, you want to paint in a manner relatively similar to if you were painting with normal acrylics, which is to start from the lowest layers and work your way up. So I'm going to start with a layer of Gilliman Flesh on their skin. You can pick anything you like, of course, and that's going to be a recurring thing. I will probably say a few times. Now once that's dried, we're going to move on to actually painting in the uniforms. Now I'm going to do this a couple of different ways so that you can see, you know, you can do it however you like. Soviet uniforms, of course, there was quite a lot of variation in dye lots and fade and what have you. And I think once you are turning to contrast or speed paint or the like, you've kind of accepted close enough is what you're going to get. So pick what you like the look of is the short answer. So this one, this is Brownish Decay from the Army Painter. And we're going to apply a fairly generous blorp of this starting on his trousers. Um, I like to start in areas where it doesn't matter too much if I make a bit of a mistake. Because then what I can do is get a feel for how this is coming off my brush before I start attacking areas up around his face and his collar and what have you. So brownish decay over this entire uh, uniform, trying to avoid bits of equipment, satchel, straps, that sort of thing. So there we go, nice and simple. It's about the right color, it's pretty dark. Yeah, you can do plenty with that. But like I said, let's do a couple of different ones. So we'll swap over. And what I have here, this is Battle Dress Brown, and it is a Vallejo Express color. But this one is a little less green, and it's, it is genuinely quite similar. But as you see going on, just a bit more brown. So, supply this and get a look at this once it's dried. So, side by side, our Battle Dress Brown and our Brownish Decay. As you can see, Battle Dress Brown is a little more brown. It hasn't got quite that same green touch to it. You can even mix across different uniforms. Uh, so the Pilotka on this guy, you might choose to do in a darker green. But we have got a third option. And that would be Agaros Dunes from Citadel. Now this is what you'll quite commonly see people using, I think in most uh, Soviet guides, using contrast. And again, it's another one that works perfectly well. I would suggest... If you're painting the uh, the winter uniforms, those padded jackets, this is probably what I would use. Personally, I'd otherwise stick to uh, battle dress brown for the uniforms. But, of course, variation doesn't hurt. Now this, I think, is the color that most people are thinking of when you look at the product page at Warlord Games. You know, have a look at those Soviet troops. This yellowish summery sort of color. Um, and Agaros Dunes is the way to get that. Like I said, for the winter uniforms, that's probably my pick. But let's carry on. We've got equipment to paint yet. So going back to our first fella from earlier, what I'm going to use is Mahogany. This is from Vallejo. 
And this one is a nice warm leathery sort of color. Uh, you can use something like Saigor Brown or Gorgrunter Fur even. Satchel Brown from the Army Painter is a pretty good match for this as well. But any warm, slightly leathery color will do just fine. Now for those guys who have rucksacks, uh, these were ordinarily a few different colors. Again, we're looking in the realm of a khaki sort of tone. So what I have here, this is Bag of Bones from <laughs> Vallejo Express. Uh, it's quite close to Skeleton Horde. So over the top of the bag with this, uh, Skeleton Horde by contrast is just a little bit more, it, it has got a slightly brighter, more orangey yellow finish to it. So Bag of Bones, I would say, if you can get your hands on the Express line, it's going to be worth it. Now remember as well, this strap's holding on. This uh, pack would be the same color. Now for the gas mask bags that these guys are wearing, what I have is Plague Green. This is another of the Express paints. And you can swap this out for anything vaguely similar. This is probably a little bit too green to be honest, but I'm not all that fussed. Now for the rolled great coats that some of these guys are wearing, uh, this was an interesting bit of research because as ever the answer is it can be a lot of different colors. I do like, there is a kind of a, a mousy gray version and it was apparently quite common. What I'm going to use here is Griff Charger Gray. Now over the Wraith Bone, uh, what this is going to do is go just a little bit green and uh, it's a nice you know, it's not blue, it's not gray, and once it's dried, it's going to, yeah, I think it's going to do the job. So again, once it has dried, you'll see it looks a little more reasonable. It is worth pointing out that you can use any of the uniform colors that we already have, or pick a slightly darker brown or even green, and just use that. Whatever you like the look of will be close enough. So moving on to the rifles and any other wooden details, what I'm going to use here is Wasteland Brown from Vallejo. Uh, this is a wonderful color, and almost every single time I pop it on a miniature, someone will say, gosh, that's a nice brown. Uh, and it is. So <laughs> I thoroughly recommend pick this one up if you can get it. Uh, Snakebite Leather is quite close to this, maybe a little bit more yellow in comparison. So don't worry. You're not going to miss out if you can't get this, but look at it go. Now, once that has dried, what we're going to do is apply the last of our one coat paints to the miniature. For this, I'm going to use Black Legion, and I'll let you guess what parts we're going to paint black. <laughs> so once I've painted in his boots, uh, some of these guys, they might have shovels that need to be painted, uh, and the black bits on the weapons, of course, i will do those at the same time. This is also a good opportunity to fill in uh, any bits of hair. You know, if you've got guys who have hair visible, you know, something nice and quick like this will work well. Now, personally, even when I'm doing these contrast or speed paint style of miniatures, what I like to do is still paint in things like helmets, grenade launchers, piats, bazookas, that sort of thing, with a traditional acrylic. And what I've got here, this is Camo Olive Green. Um, I just like the look because it's a more solid finish than we would get out of using the speed paint. Uh, if you wanted to, something like Creed Camo, you know, pick a Army Man Green. Um, but I am going to give this a quick coat, give it a chance to dry, and pop another one over the top. Then what I'll apply is a little bit of Strong Tone. You can thin this out if you want to, but I think we're not going to use very much of it, so it won't matter too much if you don't. I'll pop that over the helmet, and as well I am going to apply a little bit of this over this fella's coat, just to brown that up a bit. Now once that has had a chance to dry thoroughly, what you can do is, if you fancy, go around and add a little bit of a highlight with some fresh green, but I don't think you're going to need to. What I am going to do is hit him with a matte varnish. Um, I'm using here Instar's Varnish Plus. Um, you can spray one on, you can use pretty much anything, uh, Vallejo's or AK Interactive. Whatever you find that works for you, really. Anyhow, once I have varnished these guys, 
I'll pop the bases on them. The recipe for that will be in the description. Let's get a look at these chaps once they are all finished. So there we have it, nice and quick, our infantry complete. And I think this goes some way to showing the incredible value of a halfway decent varnish, because these guys go from looking like shiny toy soldiers to, all right, a little bit more reasonable looking. Now you could also go ahead and give these guys a thinned down wash. Um, in other videos, you'll quite commonly see me putting a wash over the top of contrast and similar, and it works quite well. But in this instance, the colors that we're using are already fairly washed out, so I've decided not to do that this time. There's also there a little hint of pencil. Uh, I probably should have shown you that, but a wee bit of 2B pencil just scratched along the edge of the black bits helps to sell the gunmetal appearance. So from left to right, we have our Agaros Dunes, our Brownish Decay, and our Battle Dress Brown. And between the three of them, I have to admit, the Battle Dress Brown is probably the one that I would go for with a Soviet army. Obviously, you can mix and match as you like, and I'd probably even encourage you to do it, especially if you find it a little difficult to get your hands on any one particular color. You can fudge it, it will not matter. So as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Your support literally keeps the channel going, folks. Really appreciate it. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.